ISDT D1 dual mode smart charger. It's AC, DC, AC is 100 watt, DC is 250 watt. We're gonna go over it in this video and break it down and let you get a closer look at it. Before we get started, I've got a little bit of a nitpick here. So they call it a dual mode smart charger as opposed to what we've been talking about here lately on quite a few others like the, the K2 that we did most recently, where those are dual port. So what's the difference in dual mode and dual port? Dual mode, such as the D1 smart charger here, it just means it's an AC and DC charger. So you can plug it into a wall or you can plug it straight into a power supply and get some more power out of it. Whereas a dual port charger actually has two, two ports on it for output. So you can charge you know, two different batteries, parallel charge different setups, but it acts kind of like two independent chargers in one. So it's a, a huge difference. I, I honestly, I, I really don't like the wording that they're using, but regardless, this video is for the, D, the D1 from ISDT. So it is a dual mode, what they're calling. So it's AC and DC. If you use AC where you plug it directly in the wall, you're gonna get 100 watts out of it. If you plug it into a power supply, you're gonna get 250 watts. So the, the features that I really like about chargers like this is that fact there alone where I can plug it into a wall and not have to set up a power supply or anything fancy. However, if I have a power supply or if I take this charger out to a field, I can plug it into like an external battery. So battery source and charge my batteries that way as well so that's a that's a cool feature i just don't like the wording so just like all the other charger videos we're going to dive right into this thing from the top down angle and let you go through and see all the features and functions of it talk about it a little bit and that's about it so otherwise buckle up and let's get started right off the bat just like always on most well just about everything that isdt makes the packaging is always beautiful Get this thing taken out of here. Come on now. All right, so you open it up, you get your typical ISDT sticker pack. User guide. This is pretty much a written version of the video that we're about to do. And then one of the big things that they usually add in that is great is the screen protectors. So if you're like me and you tend to think you're, you know, take your charger on the road and you just kind of throw it in the box or throw it in your bag and it rattles around, it will get scratched up pretty epically. So this way with the screen protector, you don't have to leave this little plastic one on. You can take it off and then put the new one on and it looks so much better. So the last thing in the box is power cable. And what's the power cable for? Well, like we said, it is an AC-DC, not like the band, charger. So you can plug it in the wall. If you look back here on the back, you have the DC port here and AC port here. One of the cool features about how they design this is you can only plug in one or the other. So if you actually plug in the AC cord here, you physically cannot plug in a battery or an external power supply while the AC cable is plugged in. So nice safety feature to make sure, you know, it's kind of dummy proof. Over here on the front, if you see, the big difference here is we have this scroll wheel, whereas like on the D2, you had different buttons instead. But yeah, so you got the, the scroll wheel here on, the, here on the front, or well, on the top, the top or front, I don't know, it doesn't matter. And then down here, you got your XT60 output, USB-C port, for firmware updates, things like that. And then your balance port for one to six S batteries. So you hear that? It is a one to six S battery charger. You got a fan port here on the back. Some information on the bottom with your little non-slip pads for the feet. And that's it. Speaking of non-slip pads, like that's actually pretty, pretty solid. So again, like we had talked about, you can plug it directly into the wall with the AC adapter. However, to get the full function or well, the full power out of this, the 250 watts, you need an external power supply, which we have setting here. So we will plug this in and get the charger fired up. All right, with our battery plugged in here, we can see our individual cell voltages here on the main screen. You have zero amp, zero milliamp hours, 23 volts for the battery as a whole. And then on your battery voltages there, you can see 3.83 volts. Uh, looks like one of them's bouncing between 383 and 382. 
If you press down, you can see our power supply input. Here we can crank it up a little bit. So our input on our power supply is 18.3 volts with 23 volts on the battery and you got some temperatures, things like that. If we tap the center button on the wheel, brings it into our task settings. So we can come up to task, you can select charge, discharge, storage charge, DC power, and destroy. What's DC power? Well, DC power is if you select that, it will turn your charger into a, well, DC power supply. So it will give you an output of one, or I lied, it will give you an output of two to 30 volts and 0 0.5 up to 10 amps. Now, if you're on AC power, you're gonna max out at 100 watt. If you're on DC power, you're gonna max out at 250 watt. Uh, but it's a cool function. Let's go back in here, sorry. Uh, otherwise, you got destroy. Why does it turn red? Well, because it's something that you really need to pay attention to that if we're gonna destroy this battery, it's literally going to destroy the battery. So the idea is it takes it down to zero volts so you can dispose of it. We're going to set for charge. Chemistries, you got lithium high voltage, lipo, lithium ion, lifey, lead acid, nickel monohydride, nickel metal cadmium. We'll go back to lipo. Condition, you can actually set where your charger stops at. So 4.15 up to 4.25 for a traditional lipo battery. Your cell count, you can go from one up to six S, and then current can go from 0 0.1 up to 10 amps. We're not gonna start anything yet. Let's dive into the system menu. So in order to do that, hold down on the center button. It pops up, lowest input voltage. That's mainly gonna come into play when you're trying to use like an external battery as you know a power source for your charger. So if you got like a giant you know, three cell, 10,000 milliamp hour pack that you're charging a bunch of small packs with out of the field. You know, if it's a 3S, you're not going to want to drop it down, you know, all the way to like 10 volts. So you can actually, you know, set a higher voltage instead of draining your battery all the way down. Max input power, you got 270 or 280 watts. Backlight, just low, medium, and high on your screen brightness. Volume, like always, off, low, medium, or high. Completion tone, you can select whether it announces one time that you're done or if it just keeps repeating. I like repeating because I don't pay attention. Uh, select your languages, theme is bright and dark. It's just whether it's like this night mode that we have set up right now for your screen or the bright normal one. Self-test, where the charger just tests its self-calibration. So this is a feature that is pretty cool and a lot of people love it to where you can actually come in and fine tune this charger. So, you know, using a multimeter that you actually trust and that is calibrated, you can check this battery to see what each individual cell is actually reading. And at that point, you can come in here, like on cell one, let's just say that it was actually 3.9. You can select it and you can crank this up and adjust the voltage, what it's actually reading, to calibrate it. And you can do that for all the individual cells. Come down here, if you're like me, and you have no idea what that was, you can hit restore and it actually resets the calibration to factory default. Uh, BATGO, we don't have batteries that have that technology in it here, so nothing to really test on that system info and back. So really that's the gist of the charger, but before we do anything else, we're gonna actually you know put this battery on charge just to see what it does while it's doing it. So charge, LiPo, 4.2 volts, 6S, 10 amps. Click the center button for start and it will pick up. So the charger's not that loud. You know, while we're letting this speed up, one thing I do want to mention is like if you're doing the discharge feature or storage charge feature of this charger, you know, you're going to get between 0 0.1 and 1 amp while you're doing that and it's going to max out 15 watts. So just like most chargers, you know, the storage charge, the discharge feature, it, it works, but it's a little slow. You know, the video that we did just recently on the FD200 dischargers, if you want to discharge any kind of speedy fashion, those are actually going to be what you should look at. Uh, otherwise, while it's charging like this, and then once it gets closer, it will start balancing the cells. For the amp rating, for balancing on this charger here, you're going to get one and a half amps for the balance. So while it's running now, we can look here. So we have uh, on the incoming about 247 watts. You got 230 watts going into the battery, running about 9.7 amps with 160 or 170 milliamp hours put into the battery. 
You can press your arrows here. So this screen just shows you the internal resistance for the cells. Go up one more time and it shows you what the voltage is for each individual cell itself. All right, so that's the D1. Again, we seem to be doing ISDT videos like every couple weeks at this point, man. They're, they're really throwing out a lot of products and they're, they're all good. And like always, if you're interested in it, links in the description, buddyrc.com. You can jump over there, check out pricing, check out anything you want. You know, if you're here and you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel if you can. I would really appreciate it. It does a lot to help us out. Like the video, comment. Also, something else we're doing is the 60 second videos you're seeing here on YouTube. They're actually originating over on TikTok. So the idea is reaching out to, well, a, a really broad audience to try and bring people in. So, you know, YouTube has been toying with their, their shorts videos. And so it actually reaches out to a different audience as well. So, you know, I put those in a playlist by themselves. You know, if you see that thumbnail pop up and you don't want to watch the video, you don't have to. It's just more content out there. So as always, guys, really appreciate everybody and the support that the community has been giving us. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next one.